Sergio Mayorga works as a fisherman, but in recent times, his catches have been getting smaller and smaller. He blames a new Chilean fishing law, which supports large-scale fishing and fish farming. Independent fishermen are suffering as a result. Their fishing grounds have been shrinking. Their hauls, too. So now, Sergio Mayorga has joined the fight to defend the interests of Chile's 90,000 artisan fishermen. But do they have a chance? Today is a fine day for fishing, at least in terms of the weather. Sergio Mayorga lives on Chile's second largest island, Chiloé, and fishes off its shores. We'll see the boys soon because of the sun. Come on, let's have a little coffee before we get there. Salmon farms as far as the eye can see. They're operated by national and international companies, and they're growing in number. Our fishing grounds are getting smaller and smaller. We used to be able to fish here. We caught American elephant fish and sea bass here, and now we can't fish here anymore because of these huge swimming platforms in the sea. And one is followed by the next. There are loads of them. A few divers have noticed that underneath them, at a depth of about 45 to 50 meters, everything is dead. There are no marine animals. Nothing. Many people here are convinced that the salmon farms are also to blame for the recent mass deaths of fish, clams, and even seals and whales. The men reach the boys. They want to catch spider crabs, but only male specimens. They want to leave the female spider crabs in the water to reproduce. That's a male, isn't it? A female. A female. A female. But we'll keep one. There are lots of them, but they're all female. And these ones? We won't keep those. We're just taking a few with us to eat ourselves. Things aren't going so well today. Right. We haven't even found one male. At the end of the day, their catch will fetch around 40,000 Chilean pesos, the equivalent of 50 euros. On Chiloé, about 80% of the population lives from fishing, and many of them oppose the fisheries law, which took effect in 2013. They say no to what is known as the Longuera Law, named after Pablo Longuera, economy minister under the former Conservative government. The fishermen sell some of their scarce catch to the traders at the local market, while large-scale fishing exports billions of euros worth of fish to Europe and Asia. Sergio Mayorga has become involved in organizing protests against factory fishing and fish farms. Now he spends more time at meetings than at sea. We have to clarify the situation and we should aim to reach an agreement without going on strike. Mansani, what do you think? We have to fight on because the law was made for big industry and not for us small scale fishermen. We pay the price. We want them to return the fish to us, the simple fishermen, so we can carry on working. We were born into this. At our age, 
we should be allowed to carry on until we retire. Then, hopefully, the younger generations will step in. At the moment, none of the boys are interested, so fishing will die out in time. Repeatedly, the fishermen have taken to the streets to fight for their livelihoods. They've made enemies in the process, some of whom have even resorted to violent means, Sergio Mayorga tells us as he arrives back at his home. That's where the firebomb struck. That's the exact spot. People have kept on trying to intimidate us, to stop us opposing the law. Even my family didn't always back me up. They always asked me why I was putting my home and them in danger. They accused me of neglecting them during my fight against the law. But I can see through the fisheries law, and I have to protest against it. At home, the topic is generally avoided. As husband and father, he tries to help when he's here. I'm helping to make a couple of milkao. They won't look pretty, but there's something at least. His wife Blanca has her doubts about his battle. So much strife and protest. People don't like it or understand it. And ultimately, you don't really get anywhere. Instead, it gets worse. Don't add any more flour, darling. I'm just cleaning my hands. Wash your hands here. It's like a never-ending war, and I'm not sure what it'll achieve. I only found out yesterday they've threatened to arrest him, and who knows what else. He doesn't even tell me. He thinks it's better for me to find out from others, but that's much worse. And what do you fear? I sometimes worry they'll do something to him, that they'll arrest him. The police these days are different. They beat or shoot people. It wasn't like that in the past. It's difficult, and my sole concern is fighting to make sure my family's all right. <laughs> On the following day, the fisherman is in the town of Castro, getting ready for an important meeting with politicians. I hope that we'll agree on a few points, that we'll get on well with the government's regional representatives. The meeting's about to kick off. Come on, uh, sit close to the heat. How are you? The fishermen and women want to make it clear to their elected representatives that something has to change. We're up to our necks in it. Why? Because so many of the people counting on us are exercising pressure. It's good that you've come to look at things here on the ground. The reality is very different than what is shown in the media. It's not true that agreements have been made here and there. The reality is quite different. The government is working together with the fishermen on implementing improvements. We want to make progress on fisheries topics, and we've already reached agreement on some points. Come on, let's go! Today's meeting does at least result in some progress. Talks like these are slated to happen every other month, a platform for fishermen in southern Chile to air their grievances. After all the politics, Sergio Mayorga has finally got time to devote to his dream, his new fishing boat. But the subject of the unpopular law rears its ugly head as the men work. Chile used to have a good reputation in other countries as far as transparency was concerned. I think everyone involved should be charged with high treason. I'm serious. Chile has lost its good reputation. 
What's most important is that justice is done, for all sides, regardless of what party they belong to. I've always said politics is a dirty business. The boat will be called Rainbow Warrior, just like his old one. It's a name with particular significance. I read that the Rainbow Warrior was a ship that made the lives of the French hell as they tried to carry out atomic tests in Mururoa Atoll. The ship kept on pursuing them and didn't leave them in peace and stopped them doing what they wanted. That's why I've chosen to give my ship the same name as theirs. And why do you need a rainbow warrior in Chile? I hope that a rainbow warrior will come. I'm not looking for international support, but here there have to be thousands of rainbow warriors who fight for what they think is right. And Sergio Mayorga believes that small-scale fishing in Chile has a future. His investment in a new boat is testimony to that. It's a sign that we'll never give up. We will never give up. We'll never stop working as fishermen. We'll fight on. We won't just go home and start making marmalade or something else. No way. We will always be here. We won't give up. Time for me to go on board. Sí, pues, no, sí, se ponía. Se ponía. Y pasar la calle, ¿se la parte? Sí, es parte.